FMU, you're on the air. Uh, is this Tom? Yes, it is. Tom, hi, it's me. Oh, hey, this is, um, it's 930, and this is the guest that I told you we're going to have. This is a guy, now, you, I guess, obviously, you're, you're going to remain nameless throughout are we on the, the air, Tom? Yeah, right now we are on the air, yes. Oh, God, okay. So, you're going to want it, you want it to remain nameless for the, uh, I, I do want to remain the, nameless for uh, the reasons that I think that we had discussed before. Okay, yeah. which is, I guess, matters of? Matters of anonymity and uh, uh, just I, I, the stuff that I am well, I want to talk about, I think, is uh, that there could be repercussions to my uh, giving out the information. Okay, now, I guess we should uh, explain this, because if anybody's just tuning in now, we have uh, the guest on the program... You worked on uh, the the episode one of the uh, Star Wars movies, The Phantom Menace. I did. I um, if you want me to set it up, I, I can do it this way. Okay. Uh, for your listeners out there, I worked on uh, uh, the latter part of uh, Phantom Menace. I came on uh, at the end of production and and all through post production. Okay. And I worked on episode two. Uh, all through pre-production and through the shoot, through most of the shoot, and then uh, was uh, unceremoniously uh, let go from from the process. Okay. Well, and uh, now I can I can vouch for you the fact that I know you did work on the on the uh, the first and and second movie. Right. But I now would you, what what capacity could you explain you you were involved in? In, uh, the movie well, making. without I suppose tipping too much of, uh, of my identity, I was uh, in, in the vaguest sense I was an on-set assistant effects supervisor. But it, it's it's a job that requires uh, a person to be on the set during the shooting of the film as a representative, as one of many representatives uh, for Industrial Light and Magic for the effects de- uh, department to to make sure that all the photography is lined up and uh, and we know what we're doing in terms of everything we need to put in. The, the numerous post-production effects for the movie. Okay, so uh, so you you joined the first movie in progress. That's correct. And then how how deep into the second one did you get as a uh, as a uh, a member of the crew? Well, as I said, I was on for the entire prep period of episode two, and then probably for I would say three quarters of the shooting uh, at the the new uh, Fox Studio in Australia. Uh, before I was let go. Okay, and why why was it that you uh, you were let go from from the making of the movie? Well, Tom, I don't. I mean, uh, I don't want to get into it too much, but the, I think um, I would say I'm sorry, Tom. I'm a little nervous, but uh, I would say that just in in the in the context of making a Star Wars movie, some opinions are, are valued uh, more than others, and some aren't valued at all, and and. Star Wars uh, is and always has been George Lucas's vision, and mm-hmm. uh, you know it's either George's way or the highway, and and uh, I, I guess uh, I got the highway, as oh. it were. Mm-hmm. But uh, I um, I, val- I very much value the time that I worked on the films, and mm-hmm. uh, I guess uh, I know that there is a great uh, desire on behalf of the fans to know things about Episode Two, and and I respect that, and uh, you know I just. I have this information, and and you know I would I'd love nothing more than to share some of it. Um, so okay. as you can understand mm-hmm. it. Uh, I have to be very careful. Yeah, absolutely. Now, why why is it that you are are feeling the need to to uh, to do this first of all, I guess, and and why are, would, are you doing it with me? Even well, though I'm I mean I know you. you. I'm doing it with you because I. I uh, as I said, I know you, and and there's so many rumors going around concerning this film, as there were the last one. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, I, I as a as someone who experienced this firsthand, and also as a fan, I want to you know I want to get a certain amount of information out there. Um, now, some of these things are, you know, what you would call spoilers if you're if you're an internet fan. Um, so if there's anyone who who does not want to know information about the film, I urge them uh, to to turn off their radios. Okay, but but for those of you who who want information, as I know I would, uh, I, I want to provide it. And frankly, um, you know, I I just I, I've got nothing to lose essentially. Okay, now um, 
Did you now with episode two? I guess it well with episode one. It was a well known thing that that um, the actors and I guess people were only shown a couple pages of the script at a time, just That's correct. on a need to know basis. They That's got correct. So how much of the story are you are you um, aware of or or you know familiar with? Well, I mean, this is the real question in the Star Wars universe. There are only a handful of people who have entire scripts. Um, uh, George Lucas, Rick McCallum, you know, uh, uh, only a few of the effects department heads. Uh, the rest of us get partial scripts. And then for, for certain purposes, there are script pages that are produced that are completely erroneous to fan, to, to, to sort of fan the flames of, of, the, of the Star Wars mania and send out uh, intentionally incorrect material. Now, did you come across things that were incorrect when you were working on episode one? Did oh, you, absolutely. I mean, so you got fake pages then? Uh, but we always knew which ones were the fake pages. I I always knew uh, the fake pages. There's a very easy way to tell the fake pages from the real pages. Uh, I'm not going to go into that and tell you how you can do it, but there is a very easy okay. Way. So you knew when you were getting pages that that uh, oh, ab- were just... absolutely. We knew the. We knew the fake ones. Now, was that something to, um, to to maybe try to catch people leaking stuff? I mean, is that... Yes. So that's why they... And people, they... And people were let go for that very reason. Okay. Now, you, you... So how much of Episode 2 are you aware of? Well, percentage-wise, um, I'm in terms of the overall story, I'm aware of quite a bit, and in terms of specific characters and, and things, and, I, you know, obviously one of the great mysteries about the movie so far is what is this film titled uh-huh. know, episode two and uh you know i i think the uh the front runner on the internet is rise of the empire and that of course if anyone knows anything about star wars is an erroneous title that was thrown out around the time of uh episode one before the phantom menace was the official title everyone thought it was called uh fall of the republic mm-hmm. um and uh rise of the empire is a title that uh that is erroneous to people. I think some people think it's the title. Um, I happen to know what the actual title is, at least the time I was, as of the time I was let go. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you like, that's one of the things I'd like to discuss tonight. Well, uh, you know, that's a, I guess is, that's a huge bombshell for, for Star Wars fans is what the, the title of episode two is. So, I mean, absolutely. Well, it, it's, uh, it is, a, it's, it's probably, I think, the number one uh, uh, most coveted bit of episode two information and uh the gist of this story to, to sort of set it up is you know uh, episode two is strikes this balance between a love story between anakin and amidala and then the uh, the rise of the sith lords um all the drafts of the script it changed the, you know it was always just called episode two i think in the last month of my involvement a certain amount of pages were released with the title of veil of the sith okay so it's actually going to be star wars Veil of the Sith. Star Wars Episode Two: okay. Veil of the Sith. Okay. Um, at one point, the title uh, "Hand of the Sith" was was thrown around, and that was incorrect. And uh, the Jedi Nexus was one, but "Veil of the Sith" is the official title of Star Wars Two. Okay. Now I should again for anybody who's just joining the program, I have a uh, a guest who I guess you want to remain nameless, obviously. Absolutely. For the fact you worked on the. Uh, Episode one of the Star Wars movies, and and how much of three quarters of episode? About three two? quarters of, as I said, I worked on all of pre-production and about three quarters of production of of episode two. Okay, and then you, now you're you're kind of leaking some stuff on this, which is kind of this is kind of a, a coup, and you know I appreciate you doing this uh, on this program, obviously. And uh, well, I Tom, I'm, my relationship with you, which we won't go into again mm-hmm. because I want to remain anonymous, but I. I want to do this for the show, and I also, you know, for for my sake, I didn't, and, and not to say anything about your listenership, but I want, I, I didn't want to do this in a giant grand gesture. I wanted to just sort of let it out there, and in a sort of a smaller venue, and and uh, your show just seems to be the perfect way to do it. Now, um... because there are, you know, there would be major ramifications for me if uh, if this information. Uh, was traced. Yeah. Now, now I guess you you sign when you go to work for for George Lucas and and uh, Lucas Films on on something that's kind of high security like this. You know, it's a top secret project. You must sign some sort of agreement that you're not going to do this. Oh, absolutely. We all sign confidentiality agreements, and that's crucial to working on on the, all of the movies. Uh huh. 
Yes. And those are obviously enforced. Absolutely, they are there, and with with uh, you know, there there's no stronger legal team than the Lucasfilm Limited legal team, and and these are we're not just talking about a slap on the hand; we're talking about um, serious fines and penalties. Mm-hmm. So wh- why are you breaching your your agreement that you you signed with them? Well, quite frankly, because my agreement was breached. I had an employment agreement with Lucasfilm Limited, and to my mind, if they were not willing to live up to the agreement that they signed with me, why should I be? Uh, why should I live up to the agreement I signed with them? Mm-hmm. Okay, that well, I guess. And, that... I don't, I, and, and Tom, I don't want to make this about um, uh, sour grapes or about revenge or anything. I am in the position I, I'm in, and I have no one to blame for that but me. But a byproduct of that is that I do have this information. I know that there's um, a demand for it out there, and 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 I I want to let people know. So is this sort of? But are you, this is vaguely kind of a, a revenge type thing for you, in a way. I mean that that has to factor into it somewhat. Well, I, I mean. If, if any star, if anything a Star Wars fan knows is that uh, revenge has no place in the Star Wars universe. Mm-hmm. It was it was Return of the Jedi, not Revenge of the Jedi. So yeah. revenge goes against the code of the Jedi, and I don't think that I've fully gone to the dark side or anything. I mean, I, I feel I feel like this is um, you know I'm not showing people the movie, and I'm not going to tell everything about the movie that I know, but I'm just going to tell a few things that I think would whet people's appetites for the movie and i mean mm. it, to my way of thinking there's no better advertising for the movie than for people to know this stuff to get some details yeah no i guess um well why don't you give us something else i mean what what else is like a, an exciting well as i said the title is is i think a biggie and and uh Absolutely. i know there was a lot of controversy when the actual title the phantom menace came out oh that's a fake title there's no way and uh i i think it's a great title but uh uh, veil of the Sith. I also think. I mean, it is a great title too because it um, it really does seem to sum up what this movie's about. No, we. And okay. The, well, so all right. Well, well yeah. the other thing I would say about this movie, um, and I know there's been a lot of. Uh, uh, you tell me the things that you want to know. People ask. I think they want to know about Jar Jar Binks. They want to know about uh, this uh, relationship between. Amidala and Anakin Skywalker. The thing mm-hmm. that I can say about that aspect of the movie and the movie in general, um, at the stage that I've seen the film and, and pieces of the film and what I witnessed on set, the the level of violence and even, I would say, the sexual content of this movie is, is actually much more explicit than I ever thought you'd see in a Star Wars movie. Now, granted, these, the movie, you know, Will will be PG or PG thirteen? There's uh-huh. no doubt it'll be PG thirteen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but some of the stuff I saw, and I know that that's sort of the way of filmmaking. You sort of you go as far as you can go, and you can always take it back in the editing room. But the stuff that some of the stuff they were shooting uh, was really, uh, I think, will will be uh, of uh, you know uh, will be quite uh, Star Wars fans will be really happy to see that that uh, this is not. This is not the tone of, of the Phantom Menace. Okay, because a lot of people were, were unhappy with the fact they seemed they thought it was uh, that it was uh, vaguely infantilized. Well, that was uh, that was uh, really the prevailing thought about that first movie, and they were absolutely right. And one thing I will say uh, in George Lucas's uh, defense, he does listen to the fans, and he does he did react very. Uh, I think George Lucas was very surprised at the negative reaction that the Jar Jar Binks character got in the first film. Mm-hmm. Is he rectifying that for this film? You bet he is. Absolutely. Really? And uh, the Jar Jar Binks that you're going to see in this film, as we know, ten years have passed since uh, The Phantom Menace. Okay. And the Jar Jar Binks that we see in this movie is is uh, a more serious, more mature Jar Jar. He's you know now a security, a security officer for the Naboo. For the Queen, and uh, you know, in certain scenes, he's he's Anakin's sidekick, but it's a much more uh, it's a grittier version of Jar Jar Binks, and as ridiculous as that sounds, I am telling you, it is, and I think mm-hmm. the fans will be pleased about that. Now, what what um you know you you've worked pretty much you worked with George Lucas throughout the process, like you were well a great deal of the time we were with uh, there were different units. There's the main unit, there's a you know a second unit, a B and a C unit. I was with the effects units for part of the time, but but uh, this is 
a movie in which there are effects in every single shot of the film. So we were with Lucas's unit for a great mm -hmm. deal of the time. So what what is he like to to work with? An absolute control freak. Okay. Which I guess isn't surprising, but he's. Uh, I mean, is he? Is he? He's are so. Are you asking me? Is he a nice man? Is he a? It, well, is he a nice man? Well, I I, uh, I could probably count the number of full blown conversations I had with him on one finger, but uh, <laughs> he. Uh, wow. He uh, he is a. Uh, he knows what he wants. Okay. So. And, but I will say again, in his defense. My feeling, and I think the feeling of a lot of the other uh, crew people involved, is that he's listening more to other people on this film. Um, and, uh, you know, he didn't leave the job of, of writing the movie to himself. But, but the, mo the most important thing is uh, I was privy to a conversation. Uh, Francis Coppola, who is a f great longtime friend of George Lucas, came to the yeah. set one day. And I uh, was privy to a conversation between the two of them where they were discussing, Coppola was discussing, uh, this whole sort of uh, breed of younger filmmakers, Quentin Tarantino, Paul Thomas Anderson, these guys, and, and the, the great energy and the grittiness that they had in their films. Um, and, and I have to say that in the footage in this, in this movie, um, there is that influence. I mean, it is a much grittier film than, than uh, I, you know, the word gritty doesn't even apply to Phantom Menace. No, absolutely but, not. Well, when you, now, when you say gritty, I mean... I, I almost can't even picture a, a gritty Star Wars, Any anything gritty about... Well, I'll have to say this. There's nothing gritty about Star Wars, but if you go back to uh, Episode Four, A New Hope, and you conjure up images of uh, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi slicing off a guy's arm in the cantina, or uh, mm -hmm. Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru lying scorched uh, uh, on, the, on the sand after the stormtrooper attack, okay. that stuff is gritty. Yeah, okay. In comparison. And I'm, let me tell you... The stuff that I've seen, some of the scenes that I've worked on, effects-wise, um, were far grittier than that. Which is surprising, I guess, because this is that would be kind of a, a 180 for Lucas, because you know he went back and, and uh, meddled with the the uh, the first three movies and actually sort of tried to nice it up. Yeah, like he, like he took. Well, let me tell you what what I what I believe uh, mm -hmm. the deal is. I think that he got so much flack about nicing up the first one that, in a way, he's going he's going in the other direction. I mean, don't forget that this is the guy who, uh, with with Spielberg, was the man who ushered in the PG-13 rating in the first place. It mm -hmm. was 1984. It was Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, and they had a guy sticking a uh, you know a hand in a guy's chest and pulling out a beating heart, and and uh, this. This was the image that conjured in PG-13, and, and uh, this is the same guy. I mean, mm -hmm. he, he uh, first and foremost, wants to stay on the cutting edge, and I think at the time of Phantom Menace, he was out of touch with youth culture. Now, in the time between the first one, or the, the, in Phantom Menace and this one, okay. I think he's caught up somewhat. I think he's very aware of the way that violence has uh, made its way into youth culture a lot more. I think he's very aware of, of the way that... that Sex has become uh, a, a bigger deal for teens. Movies like Road Trip and American Pie and whatever, which you wouldn't think to apply to the Star Wars universe, but the the love scenes, the scenes between Amidala and Anakin in this movie, at least what they've shot. Now, I can't tell you that's going to actually make it into the final cut. Okay. It's racy stuff. Seriously? Yes. Wow. That's See, that that is probably the biggest shock that you, that you could you could mention in in conjunction with with anything that's in the well, Star Tom, Wars franchise. I'm not going to tip everything, but I will say this: bear in mind the notion that this Anakin Skywalker is ten years older than the one we saw in Phantom Menace. Yeah, it is a romance. This movie is a love story between the two, so we see their relationship evolving at the same time. Tom, Anakin Skywalker is turning over to the dark side of the Force. Okay, these things are not separate; they mm -hmm. they relate to each other. So, if you can imagine an, a, a story arc where a normal relationship is is evolving between these two people, and then take that and and understand that uh, he's succumbing to the dark lords of the Sith, and that's affecting his relationship in in uh, in very negative, sometimes violent ways. It's it's uh, it's really interesting stuff, and 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 very dark. Mm -hmm. Now, would you be would you be willing to maybe take a phone call? If somebody had a question? Absolutely. Okay. Well, actually, the phones have been flashing, so why don't we take a call? FMU, you're on the air. Hello? Hi. 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 
Hello? Hello? Are you there? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Um, I have, I, I have several questions. Okay. Can the caller confirm any of the rumors that uh, Mr. Lucas withheld food from certain crew members? I'm sorry, Tom. What was that? He, can, you, can you hear the caller? I think. Did he say withholding food from crew members? Yes. I think I read that in movie line. Well, I think what this caller, Tom, is referring to, I think that's an exaggeration of whatever what actually happened. There was an incident uh, the first month of shooting at the new Fox Studios. And the studio is literally a new studio. It was just built by Fox um, in an attempt to sort of save costs. It's in Australia. There was a lot of trouble with the, uh, the, uh, the food service there. And it became sort of a joke on set that if uh, you did something to piss off Lucas or the movie that day, they were going to withhold your food. I think that's what he's referring to. But, okay. Uh, so it's kind of something that got blown out of yeah. proportion. It's obviously somebody picks it up and runs with it. That's right. And that's right. the kind of sort of fan rumor that uh, that's ridiculous. And, uh, you know, uh, w- what I'm trying to provide tonight is, is actual details from the movie. Mm-hmm. And, and that, I think that, I mean, I think that sort of illustrates the case that that's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. But thank you, caller. Uh, thank you, caller. Sure, sure. Hey, I, I have more questions. Okay, one more question because we got to keep moving. We got other calls coming in. I want to know how the uh, the death of DeForest Kelly will affect this next episode. Okay, uh, Tom, I, I don't. Let's go to another call. That's that's Star Trek. So again, I just for anybody tuning in now, we have uh, somebody who was a crew member of Episode One of the Star Wars movies and most of Episode Two, and and you were uh, you were let go. That's and right. and now you're kind of using this as a forum to maybe fill in some details of of the of the great mystery surrounding episode two of the the Star Wars uh, franchise. Yeah, I mean, it, it, there's there's been a lot of talk, and and uh, you know, there, but I think that uh, there's some really interesting stuff going on. I mean, uh, you know, for longtime Star Wars fans, you're going to get to see R two D two and C three PO back mm-hmm. on. Uh, Owen Lars Moisture Farm. We're going to see all that again. Okay. Uh, Un- Uncle Owen, a much younger Uncle Owen, is a character in this movie, as is uh, his wife Baru. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're going to see uh, you're going to see Boba Fett back, along with the other Fets, Jango Fett and Buffett. There's a whole group of Mandalorian army. Uh, with, I don't want to get into that, but there are a bunch of new characters. Uh, no, I guess Boba Fett is a uh, huge fan favorite of the of the Star Wars franchise. Absolutely, so, yes. so I guess that's kind of his his concession. That's also more of a gritty character within the because I guess people like the fact that he was a loner and and he uh Well, bear in mind the Boba Fett that you know from The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi was a loner. In this universe, you're going to see the entire gamut of the Fets. There was more than one. There was as I mentioned, there's Jango Fett who's a major character in this movie. Um, there's Ambu Fett. There's also Boba Fett. But you're going to see, you're going to be introduced to the to the uh, to the Mandalorians, and that's uh, that's a whole other thing that we can get into uh, another time. But uh, you know, you're going to start to see. Uh, there's a lot of talk about everyone's in the, in the first Star Wars or Episode Four. They refer to the Clone Wars. Yeah. You're going to see that. You're going to start to see clone troopers in this film. Uh, there's a whole new uh, group of bounty hunters, uh, Zamwazel, a uh, female bounty hunter. Uh, a lot of new interesting uh, planets and, and, and places, an amazing battle in the rain. Uh, there's just uh, there's tons of stuff in this, in this film, as you can imagine. Um, you're going to see an amazing battle in the rain between Obi-Wan Kenobi and Jango Fett, which uh, I can go into. But uh, um, Sure. I mean, if you want if anything, you can... Well, I think you know. Obviously, Ewan McGregor is back as Obi Wan Kenobi. He's now sporting the uh, the Alec Guinness beard. And uh, for those of you who uh, may have been upset about the lack of Jedi fighting action in, in Phantom Menace, uh, you're going to more than make up for it in this film. The mm-hmm. fight scenes in this in this film are are unbelievable. Mm-hmm. The things that I've seen so far. Now, another uh, question, I guess, uh, going back to Jar Jar Binks, I guess, do you ha- do you have any? awareness uh, i guess uh, you know when jar jar binks came out people complained not only about the fact that it was silly but they also complained about the uh some people inferred that it was vaguely vaguely racist in terms of this kind of like Absolutely. jamaican thing and and uh him just doing kind of like a jamaican accent 
and uh, and also people were speculating that Jar Jar Binks was gay, which uh, I well, guess Tom, I think that's all ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I think that George has addressed the uh, the notion that people were annoyed by uh, Jar Jar Binks as to whether the character was overtly racist. Uh, I I don't think he's uh, I don't think he puts too much stock in that kind of criticism. Mm-hmm. Why don't we take another call here? And sure. the phone number is two zero one two hundred nine three six eight. We're answering. Uh, or fielding questions from someone who worked on the the Phantom Menace and the upcoming Star Wars movie. FMU, you're on the air. Yeah, hi. I think we got cut off. Okay. Um, I've also been hearing a lot about uh, product placement in this new episode, uh, specifically Doritos and Lemon Pledge, and I wanted to know if the caller could confirm or deny this. Well, that just sounds... There are no Doritos and there's no Lemon Pledge in the new Star Wars movie. Okay, again, that, that sounds just... that. See, that's just, I guess, where fandom kind of gets weird, where people just believe anything anybody tells them. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, I... Uh, you know, Tom, I, I don't know if, if there are any actual Star Wars fans who listen to your show, mm-hmm. and maybe this was... Uh... Well, here's another call. FMU, you're on the air. Hello. Hello. I'd like to find out, um, is there truth in the fact that, uh, I mean, truth in the idea that there's going to be a young Boba Fett? Well, obviously, he's younger than the Boba Fett that you meet up with later in The Empire Strikes Back, yes. But it's but not going to be a child, though. He's not a child. Okay. Mm-hmm. No. Um, and how does he deal with, I mean, I noticed in a lot of local, I mean, the uh, recent uh, George Lucas work, there's a lot of comedic elements. I think that the attempt here in this second movie, in Veil of the Sith, is to create a story that is more of a love story. Uh, it's also it's a love story, and it also starts to get darker. So I do think that the sort of uh, humorous elements, you're probably referring to some of the fart jokes and things in the in Phantom Menace. Well, also, I mean, Jar Jar himself. And Jar Jar Binks. I would say that, let me just say this, with Jar Jar and that character, I think there's an attempt to tone it down. There are some other characters... That uh, that may uh, there's a there's a character in the film called Dexter Jetster who owns a place called Dexter's Diner. Um, that, to my mind, is going to be probably the most controversial character in Veil of the Sith. In in what way? Uh, because he is designed, to my mind, he is a classic example of a character in the George Lucas universe who is designed uh, almost exclusively for comic relief. Okay. So, which, which I guess is, is, uh, he'll never escape that entirely. Putting, putting a character who's, who, who you know is going to lighten well, sadly, the tone. No, I, 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 uh, I don't know why he. Uh, and, and frankly, Tom, this is probably one of the reasons that um, I was let go from the organization. I may have been too vocal about my opinions about the characters in the Star Wars universe because I love them. I love those characters. I have mm-hmm. strong feelings about them. And, and when you're there making the movie and you start to get in your head that maybe I can affect this for the for the better, it's very hard to hold back your opinions about these characters because they're real. Mm-hmm. And and I may have said things that offended Mr. Lucas or I may have said things that he took the wrong way, but for better or for worse, I as a Star Wars fan and not just an employee feel strongly about those things. Yeah, you have a stake in it. You came into it with probably what Let I guess... Let me ask you this. Uh-huh. And it's a question that People have asked over the. I mean, people. People will ask a, a hypothetical question. If you could go back in time and and have access to Adolf Hitler and have killed him, would you have done that? Well, mm-hmm. it's similar in the sense that if you could have gone back in time and been on the set and talked him out of creating Jar Jar Binks, would you have done it? You, would I have done it? You're damn right, I would. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think a lot of people would agree with you. Now, caller, do you have any other uh, questions for for our well, guest? I mean, I have, I have to say though, I agree with uh, what what uh, he's saying because I. Used to love, I mean, C-3PO. I mean, in the beginning, he was sort of just a little bit of comic relief, but as time went on, and with uh, Return of the, by the time Return of the Jedi happened, you know, he was just an in- incredibly insane. Just he wouldn't say anything straight. Nor That's and right. also Han Solo, that character became a joke. Everything that came out of his mouth. Right. And do you know? And do you know? With that attitude, you would have been fired from Lucasfilm too. <laughs> well, well, thank you for calling. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. The number is 201-200-9368. And I should make mention you're listening to WFMU East Orange, WXHD Mount Hope, 
worldwide on the Internet at WFMU.org. We're taking calls regarding the uh, upcoming Star Wars Episode 2. We have a cast member, you a, a crew member. Crew you, member. You were let go, and you're letting uh, our audience in on certain details. Yeah. Okay, let's take another call here. FMU, you're on the air. Hey, how you doing? All right. Hey, could you turn your radio down, please? Sorry about that. That's all right. I just got a question uh, about Yoda. If he's, uh, I heard that he's doing a fight scene. Is that true? You will absolutely see Yoda. That was another complaint from Phantom Menace. People wanted to see Yoda wielding a lightsaber. You will definitely see that. You'll see it scenes from the uh, Jedi training trials. They always speak of the trials that a Padawan has to take to become a Jedi Knight. You'll see that in this film. You'll see Yoda presiding over the trials. And you'll also get to see Yoda toward the end of the film uh, in full-on Jedi uh, uh, fight glory. Which wow. Which I think is, is, is really great stuff. And I think it's some of the best stuff that, uh, and again, I'd only seen some of the early effects stuff, but it's some of the best stuff I've seen ILM do. Now, is that is that something that's going to look maybe, or is, that, is there a fear of that looking silly at this point, since people are used to a different Yoda? Well, understand this is a Yoda, a younger Yoda, Yoda more in his prime than he is in Empire Strikes Back or Return of the Jedi. So as to whether it's silly, um, let's just say it's odd looking. What about uh, Mace Windu? Mace Windu is back. Uh, he has a larger role than he did in Phantom Menace. Yeah, that's uh, a good question. Thank you. He makes it through. Sam Jackson makes it through this movie. He will also appear in Episode 3. And his his character takes on larger a larger role in the movie. Absolutely, and 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 I will say this uh, a, a, a quite unexpected role. Okay, in just I know you don't want to give everything away because no, you... I, I really don't. I, mm -hmm. I don't because okay. I am a fan and I want to keep some things yeah secret as well. Okay, not. okay. Any more questions, caller? No, that'd be it. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Good night. Another call coming in. FMU, you're on the air. Hi, I'm calling to talk to your Star Wars guy. Okay. And uh, I got a question for him. Sure. Should, should I hold on? Or what's no, absolutely. No, can, can, can you hear him? Oh, okay. I'm on the air? Absolutely. Yeah, my name's Miller Caps, and I am directing a documentary for Mr. Lucas on the making of Episode 2. What company do you work for? Hello? What company do you work for? Oh, I work for a company... That is based in Marin County. You'll have to do better than that. Well, you'll have to do better than some of your answers because, frankly, I haven't come across you on this, and I'm and I'm a little confused this on exactly Thomas, uh, what your fake. role is on the production. I tuned in Thomas, a little late. So. Fake. Well, you can you just explain to to the what was your role this on the film? Fake, Tom. Okay, I, I was contracted by Lucasfilm to make a documentary on the making of. Episode two. Now where There's where are you? Unbelievably tight security around this documentary. You've been shooting. You've been shooting a documentary on on episode two. On digital video, yes, we have. And where were you shooting? Where were we shooting? Yeah. I'm not allowed to say anything about the production. And okay, Tom. Anyone who worked on it and respects Mr. Lucas Tom knows the the severest consequences come from this type of disinformation, which you seem to be perpetuating. Well, we've already talked about that. And, yeah, and what, uh, so what's your question? Caller? I tuned in late. I'm, I just was. Exactly. What was your role on the? And I forget your name, so I can't. I tuned in. Well, late. you don't know my name, and that's the whole point. But the, the the point of it is, I don't think you've been listening to this show. And Tom, what is your name? He he said he's not going to give his name out. That was part of the stipulation for him to come on the program in the first place. Okay. Uh, what is what, your question, Colin? Uh, well, can you tell? Can, I'm going to say a phrase to you, and your response, I think, will clear things up for me. Orange ballast. Orange ballast. Does that mean anything to you? No, and it doesn't mean anything to you either. It means a lot. Tom, get rid of this call. I think we have a fraud going on here. I'm sorry. Yeah. Look, I'm not sure who it is. I do know this guy, and I, I can vouch for for him, because he's he's a guest on my program, and he's also a friend. Sir, can you turn down your radio, please? Me? The, yes. I don't have a radio on here. Well, I'm getting an. Tom, this guy's not even smart enough to turn down his radio much. Okay. Like but I can vouch. I can. No need to, to take that tone, sir. I can. I'm trying to figure out exactly where this is coming from because you seem to have a lot of information which perhaps has been left out of my documentary or you're out of your mind i'm just trying to figure out which one it is i i mean i personally can vouch for the for my guest okay so tom to me the the onus of proof is on this guy if you've done a documentary on episode two why don't you give us a, a star wars secret that we don't know about all right here's a secret and it's not a secret it's a fact you're not supposed to say anything i'm not allowed to say anything and i have great respect for the project and i'm not going to say anything okay and then people the way like of, you, no way of knowing that, that you're, you're truthful you're, you're telling the truth 
Excuse me? Okay, let's, let's assume for a second that you are a documentarian, that you did do it. Why are you calling? What's your question? My question is, why are you doing this? I'm trying to protect. I have a vested interest. When my documentary comes out, it's going to answer a lot of questions a lot of people have. It's going to be very exciting for a lot of people. And frankly, you're creating confusion for my audience and, uh, frankly, what I believe to be disinformation. I mean, I, this is my life's work. I'm documenting exactly what's happening. I'm not blabbing it away on a radio station for my if own. If you're truly doing a documentary on or, episode two, your documentary is going to come out when the movie is ready to be promoted. And it's going to reveal the secrets at the time George Lucas wants you to ABC reveal the secrets. TV. And that's not what I'm doing. I'm doing something different, okay? I worked on the movie, and... Um, and what was your, what was your, what department did you work in? We've already gone through this, Tom, and, and as I said, I don't want any, I, I don't want anyone knowing my identity. That's the whole point of this. It's, it's anonymous. And if you, if this guy, I think, is trying to convince me that he did a documentary on, on episode two, he's wrong. He didn't. And I'll tell you why, because if you were, he'd still be up there doing the documentary because they're posting. They're a year and a half away from release. Mm -hmm. Where are you calling from, sir? Lucas Ranch. You're calling North, from Lucas Ranch. Tell me Road that's on, right, sir? Excuse well, how, how are you Lucas hearing Ranch the program? And, uh, are you listening on the Internet? Yes, of course. I mean, I, was, I got a call from the main office that this was going on. They know about this. I mean, they, they track this. It's, it's Tom, this guy's bluffing. Okay, I I gotta say I know my guest and I don't know you, sir, and I I've got to go with the guy I know. He doesn't even have a question. Okay, thank you for calling. Though he doesn't even have a question. Uh, Tom, uh, can I just reiterate one mm -hmm. thing? Absolutely. I don't know if we have any other more calls, but yes, there's a couple more people. I am doing this for the fans. The fans want the information. You log onto the internet. You go to any given website. There's so much conjecture about this film. I'm just throwing things out there, tidbits. Nothing that's going to spoil the mm -hmm. movie for people. Exactly, and I have to say. To your credit, you you've given things that that as as a fan of the movie franchise, which I am, you have you've wet my appetite and you've got me thinking, but you haven't you haven't revealed like plot twists. And believe me, Tom, I've got information about the movie that would spoil things for viewers mm -hmm. that I could give away and that I may give away, but I don't mm -hmm. choose to now, and maybe I will later in the show. It depends mm -hmm. on how I feel, but the point is, it's my prerogative, and mm -hmm. and and I you know. I think you asked before, am I doing this out of revenge? No, I'm doing this because I'm a fan. Mm -hmm. And I, there's no one more excited about seeing Veil of the Sith than I am. Mm -hmm. Well, but, why don't we take another call? Sure. FMU, you're on the air. Hi. I was just wondering if there was going to be any other uh, characters that were going to show up uh, from the original series, like Han Solo. No, you won't see uh, you won't see Han Solo or Chewbacca in either of these, not in Episode 2 or Episode 3. You will see... Uh, you'll see the birth of Luke Skywalker at the end of Episode 3, um, but that's about it. You'll see, as I said, Boba Fett will be here. Um, there are a couple of peripheral characters. You know, you'll get, you'll get even more of, uh, of the Huts. The Huts play a, a very specific role, Jabba the Hutt and his uh, organization. They play, they play a very significant role in uh, Episodes 2 and 3. Okay. All right. Also, the, um, it's odd sort of in the way that regular... Uh, history would go. You have you go from a uh, manpower doing warfare, and it would move towards uh, more automated uh, and your point forms is of warfare. That's backwards in the Star Wars universe. Right. You have robots, and they transform into stormtroopers, which were men in in armor. Right. Do you see that transformation at all? Absolutely. There are going to be new. Uh, the designs for this are amazing. There were battle droids in Phantom Menace. There are new battle droids. In episode two, again, it's it's ten years later. There are new battle droids, and then one of the things this gets into with the Clone Wars is, uh, and I think it's a very smart comment, uh, Tom. That our yeah, that that, that actually is something interesting if you think about the the timeline. Right, because one of the things you know, the backstory of this is that uh, uh, Darth Sidious and the Sith Lords are are taking over the Republic, and one of the things there is that. Uh, Thematically, that uh, you know, the human li human life, or, or, or in this universe, organic life, is becomes devalued. So that uh, now we'll see these uh, these new battle droids, but you also start to see see clone troopers, and then it becomes a question of what is organic and what is machine. And there's a very smart thing that uh, that happens at the end of Episode Two that will start to foreshadow why in the original Star Wars trilogy we see uh, stormtroopers and, and who were who were people and. 
in these uh, so, in armor. So uh, this movie seems like it might also have some more so, some more thought provoking and intelligent themes running through it. I think it is a smarter film, as I said. Uh, it is absolutely a more violent film. Mm -hmm. In fact, I would I'll I'll say honestly, based on scenes, if they were to string together a cut of the movie now with scenes that I worked on and that are in there, this movie would get an R rating. You mean as is now, full on? If they put everything, everything in, you'd... absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because I, I think I mentioned or I foreshadowed before Tom this relationship between Amidala and and Anakin Skywalker, and that you see them in uh, very romantic situations. And toward the end of the film, as he starts to, uh, I'm so I'm so uh, I'm so I'm starting to worry about revealing mm -hmm. too many. Well, do, anything you're not comfortable with. Please don't. Uh... Well, I'll just say in the vaguest sense that there is a battle in episode two that Anakin, and Anakin Skywalker emerges as a hero. Okay. And uh, the fact that he uh, starts to get cocky and the dark side starts to take over manifests itself in his relationship with Amidala. And uh, if there's anything approaching, obviously it sounds ridiculous to say that there is a rape scene in a Star Wars movie, but uh, the, the footage that I've seen of this comes damn close to that. That's insane. You've, you've got to be kidding. No. No. Wow. See, that, that, is, that sounds like that would be the, the influence of people, like, like you were saying, of, of uh, I guess, Coppola having Lucas's ear, which, which they've always I had a relationship. Well, let's keep taking calls. People are really, uh, really interested in this. All right. FMU, you're on the air. Yeah, I was wondering uh, if you knew anything about uh, Jet Li playing uh, Boba Fett. Jet Li was considered uh, at one point, but uh, Jet Li is not in, in this film. I guess Jet Li is probably busy doing the, the Matrix movies, which I, right. I heard he was doing. The I guess they're filming both. They're shooting two and three Matrix back-to-back, -back, and I don't believe they've actually started photography. Yet. Okay. All right. Any more questions? Uh, just I guess you're not going to see really anything of... Uh, Darth Vader yet, though, in this second movie? In terms of the costume that we're all used to? Yeah. No. That would be three. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. FMU, you're on the air. Hi, guys. Happy holidays. Oh, thank Happy you. Happy holidays. holidays to you. Okay. Here's a couple things about the about episode one that I had problems with. First of all, I, I'm a strong believer in characters. Like, you guys stole a little bit of my thunder when you mentioned about the characters. I, I really think that movies are like 75% character, and if you don't have anything else, you better Absolutely. have something. Yeah. You know? And I really don't. I really didn't find them engaging at all. I mean, I love the first th two movies, and the, and I, I see what I, here's the problem. I really didn't like Jedi a lot, and I think that there was kind of a drop off. I mean, there was a long time in between the films, and I think Lucas probably was out of the loop for a while. He just there's a drop off, and I think that he also probably pandered to the audience and worried about more about what they would like instead of just doing the films like he did the first two. Right. And I think that, um, I don't so, know. Did you have a like question watching... about episode two? I'm sorry? Did you have a question about episode two? Uh, no. I just wanted to mention, like, I, I'm, I'm kind of worried about episode two. I have a feeling it's not going to be much better. Well, if you're watching. worried about taking your kids to see it because of uh, maybe some, some sexual content or no, some I don't have violent exactly. content, I'm just worried I, about I, I might, there be might be good. concerns. But you're you're saying that as a fan, if you're a fan of Star Wars, say you were you're, you know, in your early 30s, where I guess a lot of people are when they grew up on it, right? Saw it in the theater, saw all three movies in yep. the theater. You look, you have certain aspects, certain elements that that you respond to that you felt, I guess maybe the third movie and then the the fourth one, kind of uh, they put put by the wayside. So now my guess, do you feel that that is? Those are issues that will be addressed. I mean, will fans who who look at Star Wars and then Empire Strikes Back as the the definitive, mm -hmm. those are the two best in the in the series. Will they? Will those fans be happy? I don't think so. I, I really. Think well, I'm I asking. I'm asking my guest. I think he has a, a better idea than either you or I have. I think most. I notice most of the people who really like Episode One tend to be younger. Uh -huh. Tend to be teenagers mm -hmm. and younger. And I, I think this movie's going to surprise really, a lot of people. Uh -huh. So you think you think that those people will be happy? I think the young people will. I think well, no, no, you 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 no, weren't I working think, on the movie. I'm just asking the, the guest. I think some of the older fans uh, are going to be pleased with the amount of violence and the amount of sex in a Star Wars movie. I okay. think it's going to completely uh, take people off base. Mm -hmm. And and 
those who know George Lucas, they know that if nothing else, he's one of the most calculated people in terms of m making money and marketing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but I don't which, think that's what's going to – I don't think the people like our age in the 30s are going to be really care about that. They really – what made Star Wars so special – was the characters. People love the characters. The first two movies were lovable, especially well, I Yoda. Think that the character stuff, I think that the character stuff between Anakin Skywalker and, and Queen Amidala is, uh, is really good character stuff. Mm -hmm. True, they're going to be a lot of, they're surrounded by a lot of CG characters and puppets, and you, you take that, you take the good with the bad. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thanks for calling. All right, thank you. Thank you. Now, do you, I guess another question would be, you know, I guess a lot of people growing up on the movies... They they're looking for those elements of the of the the balance between like the thrilling aspects of it, kind of like the you know the the comic book serial type action combined with the 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 mysticism of the uh, of the Star Wars movies. Is that is that the balance that this seems to be striking? Does it does it have the classic uh, I, I balance? Think so, but I, I would I would venture to say it's darker. Okay. Dark in the way that that Empire Strikes Back was dark, or even darker than that. I'd say darker than that. Wow. So that's and and it, does this seem to be something that that maybe the merchandising is not going to be as as full on as you it, always have the merchandising. Mm -hmm. Because you know, as we know, Lucas is relentless with the merchandising. Yeah. And that's how he's built his mm -hmm. empire. And mm -hmm. I think one of the other most asked questions are when are the movies coming out on DVD? And mm -hmm. I have some news about that too. Wow. See that that actually I'd say between the title. Of the movie, which is Veil of the Sith, you you let us know, and the fact that and people have Tom, that's confirmed. That okay. is the title of the movie. Veil okay, of the Sith. and the fact that the DV, the DVDs, I guess, is is a great a great mystery because everybody felt shortchanged when Phantom Menace only came out on VHS, and when they just recently re uh, re released a, a package of the first, you know, episode four, five, and six with. You know, uh, I guess two minutes of, of uh, episode two information on it, which is barely information. Yeah, it's, it seemed so. I guess people feel short short changed by the the lack of uh, DVD product for Star Wars. Now, you have information on that. Well, yeah, and they feel short changed, but you know what happens is they feel short changed for about five minutes, and they write something about it on the internet, and they run out and they buy the VHS, and as soon as they've all bought, bought the VHS. Then Lucasfilm will announce the, the release date of a DVD, mm -hmm. and they'll all go out and buy that. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Lucasfilm has twice as much money that way. Yeah. Now, so, what what do you know about that's the... the way? And I gotta say, for a man who makes so much money, the fact that I was treated the way that I was treated, it just it it. Uh, it... Now, were you to, is is your thing over? You you've alluded to the fact that it was over creative direction. It was over creative direction. Uh, well, no, it wasn't. I. Uh, well, you well not but but you've all now you're making. I don't expect I don't expect George Lucas, who's George Lucas, to accept every idea that I have on the set of a movie. But mm -hmm. when you, when I have a great idea and there's and there's a lot of people backing me on the set and it and I mean I gave the analogy before about if you could kill Hitler would you do it mm -hmm. and if you could kill Jar Jar Binks or, or keep him from being created would you do it you would well that's how I felt on the set I mean you can imagine if you're there and you see so, something so there's a char is there a character in this that. You mentioned the guy who you said you thought was just for comic relief. There's a character in this movie named Dexter Jetzer, mm -hmm. and he owns Dexter's Diner, which is a space diner. And I don't know if you're a fan of Battlestar Galactica. I'm not. Not really, no. But, uh, uh, or if you're a fan of, of shows like Buck Rogers or, or Quark. But I'm telling you, that's what this brought to mind. And when I voiced my opinion about it in a very political way, you know, you were not your your opinion was not was not uh, favored. They were not looking for your your voice in the mix. Yeah, but you know what? Uh, I'm going to be vindicated, Tom. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why don't we take another call here? FMU, you're on the air. Hi. Right. What can you tell me about um, the development of Anakin's mother? Uh, there's very. You're going to get much more of that in episode three. Okay. So you don't see her at all in episode two. No, you see, you're, no, you will see her in episode two definitely because we do go back to Tatooine and she does play an important role in this. But you're really gonna, you're gonna see her more at. You'll see her. I'm wrong. You'll see her more at the end of two and at the beginning of three. Okay. Okay. And are there any huge battle scenes with you know hundreds of lightsabers going? I think when you see the scenes uh, in the Clone Wars in this film, you'll be very very pleased. 
Okay. Okay. That I think you'll also be pleased at the rain battle between Obi Wan Kenobi and Jango Fett. Okay. It That's is all I can say. Okay. okay. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Another call, FMU. You're on the air. Hey, what's going on, guys? How you hey. doing? I have two questions. Sure. First, I want to bring up the rumor. This is a couple months ago mm-hmm. about Christopher Walken being one of the Sith. Now, I, 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 as far as I hear now, as far as I hear now. There's no truth to it, but was there any truth to it? Christopher Walken shot two days on the film, at least two days while I was there. Now, Lucas has a habit of bringing actors back in post-production after he's done some editing and figures out additional stuff. He did shoot two days on the film. If it, uh, if it ends up in the film, because there have been some other name actors who have shown up and done one-day roles, and uh, some of them were successful and some of them weren't, and the reason they were and the reason they weren't successful in some cases were the effect that they're trying with some of these characters has never been done before. Uh, the first couple of passes at it didn't work, and, and they weren't to anyone's satisfaction. But, uh, and again, I don't want to talk too much about what this effect is and what it represents, but um, the Jedi at a point uh, in, the, in the last third of this movie are fighting an enemy that uh, is something that we haven't seen effects-wise, and it's, uh, it's very, very hard to describe. But the Christopher Walken footage was involved in that, and uh, there were other people besides uh, Christopher Walken who who came in and and did work on that. There was also, and this is probably the strangest, um, we we know that George Lucas has always been a fan of Kurosawa, and uh, there's actually some, and and, Tom, this may be too much, uh, but... There is an homage to some of the Kurosawa stuff with uh, the actor Toshiro Mifune, who of course is dead, but through the magic of film technology, uh, he appears, or at least when I was involved, he appears briefly in this film. Really? So, so what, is it like a CGI version of a of a Toshiro Mifune? It's taking existing footage of Toshiro Mifune and manipulating it in a way that he appears in a major scene in this movie. Um, it's one scene only. He's in a scene, and he's speaking English, which Toshiro Mifune, uh, with the possible exception of 1941, never did in a film. Mm-hmm. Wow. And I cannot so, say anything more about it. See, that's the kind of move that I guess it's either a, it's an homage, but it could be the kind of thing that backfires. Well, and I guess we'll the, see. Okay. Wow. Any my, more? Other, my other question was um, a couple weeks ago on Entertainment Tonight, they were uh, talking to Sam Jackson about Unbreakable, mm-hmm. and they asked him about Episode 2, and he said uh, for a couple of days he was in, sh- in front of a green, uh, green screen. Right. And he, he, um, they asked about the fight scene, and he said basically Lucas just said, Go in front of it, take your lightsaber, and just swing. Right. Now, well, that, I, I can understand if you're joking about it, but that sounds really sloppy. Well, it's not, and I'll tell you why. Because the thing that they're fighting in the last third of this film is, is uh, tied into that effect I was just talking about. And I think he doesn't want to reveal what that effect is, but let me assure you, it's something that you've never, ever seen before. Wow. All right. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you. Another call here. FMU, you're on the air. Hey, Tom. Yes. First off, I just want to say, tonight, this truly is the best show on FMU. Oh, thank you. Is this hey, stuff you're interested in? Uh, Yeah, sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I appreciate it. Do you have a question for the guest? I certainly do. I have two questions, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first question is, I don't know if this has been brought up yet, but uh, they're breaking in new digital technology. They're not shooting the movie on film. That's right. I'm curious to know if uh, that's gone well, if they've had any problems with that. They're shooting on a new 24-frame digital video. It's a high-def video that was yes. developed over six years between Sony and Panavision. And this technology, I will say this, that it finally works. I will also say, and Tom, this may be the biggest secret that I've given away and, and the one that may uh, come along with it, the biggest repercussions. Okay. Um there was three weeks of principal photography that was scrapped. Really? At, 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 at what point? Uh, the first three weeks of shooting. Okay. Because of this technology. Okay. Um, and uh, I think that all the things have been uh, resolved. But during that three weeks, um, there was script writing going on. So the interesting thing is the, technolo- the technical uh, problems were fixed mm-hmm. without a hitch. But the interesting thing is that in the time that three weeks of footage was shot, there were some pretty major script changes as they were writing during production. So that means that there 
is going to exist somewhere, three weeks worth of footage that may not correlate whatsoever to the final film that you see. And I have a suspicion that this footage is going to become somewhat of a holy grail for Star Wars fanatics mm -hmm. in the years to okay. come. All right. And I actually have uh, a wee bit of that footage in my possession. Wow. And what, what type of stuff was that? I know you probably don't want to get too specific, but well, what? Well, it's stuff actually with a, a character that they were trying to introduce that was uh, a largely CG character that didn't work uh, in addition to the technical problems of the camera, and they decided to scrap for that reason. And uh, it will be the only known footage of, of that character because that character has been completely eliminated from the film. Okay, great. Well, thanks for calling. Sure. sure. Hey, i got one more question. Sure. Okay. Um, I have actually heard other information on the film from other inside sources. Uh, who I don't want to name, but they are actually sort of name people. Mm -hmm. And I had heard something that surprised me, and uh, I, I don't want to blab it out on the air, but I understand that one of the support, I'm, I'm hoping perhaps your mystery caller can confirm or deny it. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I had heard that one of the supporting characters who was introduced in the first film, and it's uh, back in the this film. The first film being Phantom Minute. Yes. Right. Um, that... He is revealed to be a villain. Is that accurate? That is accurate, yes. Ah. Yeah, and I, wow. Uh, if you're willing to talk in more detail about it, I'll absolutely talk about it. But, uh, yeah. Um, let's just guess? say it's, it's someone who we thought was, was one of the good guys. And I'm not talking about Palpatine. Okay. Who anybody should know is not sure. a good guy. And I can tell you if you want to know. or. Let's keep it. I, I'd rather yeah, not. I, I don't want to ruin it for others, but, I mean, just... And the fact that I have heard this information, and if you can confirm that at the That's end somebody true. is revealed to okay. be absolutely true, because okay. I, th I think that goes against the spirit of what this uh, is supposed I, to be I will about. Agree, Tom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for calling. Hey, no problem. Great. Let's Thanks. take let's take one more call here. FMU, you're on the air. Hi, I have one question. I understand about the Fett Clan in Episode Two. Will there be um, a resurgence of the Greedo Clan? The Greedo clan only appears, I think, as peripheral characters, uh, and they they uh, serve the huts in this film. But uh, no real major characters, mostly just sort of henchmen. Oh, just like little Rodians, no, no Greedo. Exactly. All, the, all the Rodians are just they're they're just henchmen. Oh, that's stupid. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Well, let's. Uh, why don't you just, if you could fill us in on that? We were starting to talk about the DVD information. Right. Which. Uh, so, as I said, what, I think what's going to happen next is uh, there's, there's a lot of clamoring, not only for Phantom Menace, but obviously for the original trilogy. Mm -hmm. um, and I will say this, there was a, just released a, uh, a DVD version of uh, Francis Coppola's The Conversation. Yeah. Uh, I, you probably know about this, Tom. Well, I know. It, it, it just an audio commentary from Coppola. Yeah. Where he says it. Uh, Coppola's starting to do that with his films, and I think he's finally, for the first time, gotten Lucas interested. So... Uh, I think we have in the works a major trilogy DVD release uh, with audio commentary from George Lucas and a few other principals involved, but mostly George. Wow. And I think also some of the treats that we've been teased with over the years, um, i.e. deleted scenes, restored to their former glory. Uh, the, the famous big dark lighter scenes that appear on some of the CD-ROMs in, in a fuzzy work print form, you're going to see restored to their full glory. Okay. Uh, and... Uh, there is talk of a Star Wars New Hope thing that completes the first reel of the film as it originally appeared, which, if you're familiar with the novelization, follows that verbatim. Wow. So, so that, this would be a full-out production, these, these DVDs. They, they would this is going to make be it a real nice package. The ultimate collector's edition. Okay. The ultimate. Mm hmm Ultimate. Wow. And... Um, I guess I guess it, it, you were mentioning you know you've been mentioning uh, Francis Coppola and the the it's interesting how how the two of them Lucas and Coppola have shifted role of of kind of like a student and teacher throughout their careers where you know Coppola I guess gave uh, George Lucas his he he came and saw um, Finian's Rainbow being filmed you know he's right on the set. you know what I'll I'll give you this one last bit of information okay that sort of uh, ties into that relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm glad you brought that up because it's very interesting. Francis Coppola makes an on-screen appearance in uh, episode 2 Veil of the Sith. Wow. See that that I guess that would just be the that makes it kind of full circle, I guess, because um you know, it and it, it just let me finish my point. Just said, 
You know, and then I guess it flipped over in the 80s when Lucas was flush with success and Coppola was kind of on the skids when he was doing, uh, you know, uh, The Outsiders and, and uh, not having the most, you know, kind of having to move outside of his vision to, to make movies that made money. Right. And then Lucas produced Tucker. So then Lucas was kind of the, the parent in the in the relationship. And then now it's interesting that now, you know, Ten years later, that that Coppola is kind of spurring on the the uh, the the I guess the the artistic side of Lucas once again. Well, let's hope that's the case. Mm-hmm. Let's hope that's the case. But um, I don't know how much more I should say at this mm-hmm. point. Tom, maybe we can do this again. I, I don't know what. Uh, I would love be. to do this again. I'm sure the callers involved, would. But um, I just I felt like your show was good because it was radio. I could get the information out there. If you weren't listening, you won't get to hear it again, and mm-hmm. so it's sort of a, an interesting sort of thing where you know hopefully you know, there's something traceable. And I uh-huh. and, well, know. I guess people people can get it on the internet if they're listening on the internet, Which or I they think can it's cool that they can hear it as it's broadcast uh-huh. on the internet, and it, and it, it, the shows end up being archived at the station's uh, website, which is uh, wfmu.org. You well, can always what, hit what the archives. I, what does that mean? It means that the show, this show, will be saved. For people to listen to, I think they get saved for six-month increments that people can check and uh, and, and listen this, to any show. Our conversation tonight is archived? Well, this show is going to be archived, absolutely. And what does archived mean exactly? It means somebody can go to it and click on it and then listen to it. That someone can click on at any time on your website and listen to this show? Yeah, that's that's part of the... Tom, I, the, can't, I can't do that. We, I, mean, I mean, we kind of archive everything. Well, on the station. I mean, it's really almost. Okay, but I mean, maybe it's a conversation that we should have later. But that can't. I, I you know, we, we can't. I cannot have. Uh, you know, the whole the whole the whole reason of doing this was just to, so that it's that it's like not in a that it is in a public forum, but it's just like on the radio once and then it's gone. I can't, you can't archive this. I can't. You know, I mean, I under I understand. Look, I understand what you're saying because the the. Uh, because no. you're putting yourself. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it can't, and we'll have to talk about that. Um, because, it, because I mean, you didn't give your name out, though, and you, no, you know, um, it's. But, I mean, if you know, I mean, at the very least, they're going to have to digitally alter my voice or do something. But it cannot. See, but that th- that's gonna, just impossible for this day. I mean, it's not a. I mean, again, Tom, this is a conversation we should probably have. Okay, we will, and we will have this conversation. At a, uh, you know, we'll have this conversation after the show wraps up. But, okay, we'll... but, I, but, I, but I trust that you'll do the right thing because, I mean, it, I have gone out mm-hmm. on a limb. I, absolutely. And I tell you, I appreciate really it. And I know my audience, just based on the amount of calls we received, they appreciate it. But, I mean, I, okay, we will sort this out later, okay? Yeah, but I have to, and I, and I will, we will talk off the air. But I just absolutely. Have to, I have to reiterate that it, it's, uh, it just can't because there's, there's Let's talk about this later. Let's talk about it later. Okay? Okay, but I just, you know. Okay, I understand your point. We'll talk about it later. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much for, for calling, and I'm, I know everybody appreciates the stuff you gave uh, us, and, and uh, happy holidays to you, and I will talk to you later, and um, thank like you very talk, much. I should talk to you later tonight, then. Well, we'll talk later. We'll talk after the show. What time is the show over? It's over in about 25 minutes. Okay? Okay. Great. Well, okay, thank you very to, much. Okay, Tom, but I just have to reiterate that that we got I that. fully understand where you're coming from. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Wow, that was interesting. Why don't we get back to the music real quick? Here is something from a band called Coco on WFMU. <laughs> <laughs> 